Hello everyone, I'm your hostess with the mostest 8 second gaming and in today's video we are going to be talking about and breaking down the 3 best weapon combos that you are going to be wanting to run this season. Having a weapon combo that not only fits your playstyle but also your position on the team is extremely important so don't worry we're going to be talking about them today. But just quickly, if you guys are looking to take your Apex skill to the next level, then you need to check out the Game Leap website right now. Over there, our top level coaches are creating the best, most highly informative guides to make you the best player you could possibly be. We have Legend Guides, Gun Guides, VOD Reviews, and much more, so click the link in the description, pick yourself up a membership, and start to improve today. But okay, with that out of the way, let's get back into things. And yes, there are three main different positions on the team, and each different position wants to have a different loadout to support the team the best way that they possibly can. The three main main positions on the team are entry fragger, secondary fragger, and support. So to kick things off, we're going to be talking about the entry fragger, and like the name suggests, they are the first one into the fight. They're entering in, they're doing a lot of the initial damage, they're taking a lot of the fire off the teams so that they can push up and do their own thing, and in doing so, they need to have a very aggressive style loadout to allow them to get into close quarters, and once they're in those close quarters, be perfectly fine in those as well. So for this loadout, we're going to be using either the PK or the Mastiff and a Volt. Now I say either the PK or the Mastiff because right now they're on pretty even terms of which one is better. The Mastiff doesn't hit as hard but it is a little bit more consistent. The PK hits a little bit harder but is not as consistent. You're not going to be hitting 9s with the Mastiff with the PK, you are going to be hitting quite a few 9s if people are moving around. Though if you are able to throw some disruptor rounds on the PK and hit those nice juicy full body shots, you are going to be absolutely destroying somebody so that's why there is a nice little trade-off there. And I do recommend a shotgun on this type of loadout because after the digi threats have been removed from the SMGs, they're not as useful in close quarters. They are still incredibly solid, but if something goes wrong like a Bangalore smoke or a caustic gas or anything that's obstructing your sight, it is nice to have the option to throw a digi threat onto a shotgun and still be perfectly fine in those situations. It's not going to be happening as often as in past seasons because Bangalore isn't as meta right now, but it still can happen happen and you still need to be ready for almost everything so that is why these shotguns are so strong right now. But backing up the shotgun in this loadout is going to be the Volt and even though the Volt is an SMG this thing can basically play like an assault rifle. It is very easy to use, it's very easy to control and it's good in a multitude of different situations. Now the only issue with the Volt is it can get out DPS when you do put it against some other certain SMGs in close quarters. But that's why we're not relying on this gun for the close quarter fights, we're pairing it with a shotgun so you can pull that out instead. Well that doesn't mean that the Volt is weak in close quarters, it does just get out DPS, you can still use it in close quarters if you do need to. That's why I'm putting it in this loadout because you can use it at those medium ranges to get some initial damage out, give yourself an opportunity to push up, and once you have that opportunity to push up and you are actually inside that close quarter fight, you can pull out the shotgun, deal a lot of damage with that, and if need be, switch back to the Volt and spray somebody down. But that is going to be the entry fragger position covered so let's move into the secondary fragger and again like the name suggests this is the second one into the fight the secondary fragger is usually going to be aggressive as well either backing up the entry fragger getting some information out or they're going to be taking hard off angles to get some initial damage allowing the entry fragger to do their job get into position and then they can push up with them and because you're going to be in a multitude of different situations as a secondary fragger the recommended loadout for you guys is going to be a hemlock and a car now now the car has kind of taken the throne as the top spray SMG after the R99 nerfs and the Volt just isn't as good in close quarters like I mentioned before. So the car has taken that top spot once again. On top of that it is very versatile. It doesn't matter if you find a heavy mag or a light mag because you're going to be able to use that on the car. If you're finding a ton of heavy ammo but not a ton of light ammo then you're fine still because you can swap between the two. And even though the car is not compatible with the laser sight it's not that big of a deal. It's just one less attachment that you don't have to find in the car is not bad without it. And I know that some people are going to be saying, well, what about the Prowler? The Prowler is the best SMG in the game right now. Why not run the Prowler? Well, the reason I don't want the Prowler in this loadout is because one, it would be double heavy running the Hemlock and the Prowler, and two, it would be double burst weapons. And typically, I'm not a fan of running double burst. It can leave you out in some certain situations. But yes, the Prowler is insanely strong, and if you have a laser sight on it, its hip fire is almost better than its ADSing fire. So if you are comfortable running two heavy weapons, then you could try this out. 
but that leads us to our next weapon which is of course the hemlock and the hemlock has not gone anywhere in the meta it is still such a solid weapon and if you're hitting those nice juicy bursts where you're hitting two maybe even three potential headshots on somebody you're going to be opening up a ton of opportunities for your entry fragger to push clean up the kills and allow you to then push up with them to use the car the hemlock is such a strong weapon at exposing people's weak points because if they peak a little bit too long you are going to be dealing so much damage to them and I know some people have been a little bit worried about the hemlock going into season 20 because they don't think it's going to feel the same way or they think that's going to be outclassed by a few different weapons and I'm here to tell you that's not the case pick up the hemlock it still feels insanely strong and if you're a little bit worried about using a burst weapon at long ranges the hemlock still has the capability to be flicked into a single fire mode so you can take some shots at long range without using a ton of ammo in the burst mode and also not worrying about having to hit all three shots in the burst mode because it's a single fire mode the hemlock extremely strong in a lot of different hands extremely strong in a lot of different situations so that is why i'm putting it on the secondary fragger but now we can move into the last position on the team and that is going to be the support now typically supports are going to be in the back line they're going to be supporting their team they're going to be holding areas down they're going to be doing a lot of poking and because of that for this one we're going to be opting to take a prowler and also a marksman rifle now like i mentioned before the prowler is just such a strong smg right now it is probably the best SMG in the game with how good it is, and I know that some people might not like the burst aspect of the gun, but trust me, you need to start picking this up, you need to get used to it, go into the firing range, play around with it a little bit, understand how the gun works, and then go from there. And for those of you that have been fans of the channel for a while, you'll know that on these types of videos, I do typically recommend a shotgun for a support, because it meshes with their playstyle so well. But the Prowler on burst mode does the exact same thing, and also can allow you to get out of situations that you shouldn't, because it is a little bit of a faster fire rate than a shotgun and it just deals so much damage in such short time it's just crazy the prowler is in such a strong spot and you need to be abusing it before respawn nerfs it into the ground but the prowler is only for if things start to get really up close you still need a weapon to be poking people to be in the medium to long ranges to allow your teams to have some opening opportunities and to also hold stuff down if things get really messy and that is why i'm recommending a marksman rifle here now the marksman rifle could be one of basically three guns you could use a triple take you could use a 30 30 or you could use a g7 scout i'm not the biggest fan of the triple take i don't think it's really strong in the current meta i don't think it's a very good weapon right now but some people really love using it and if you really love using it use it in this spot I would recommend, however, going for the 3030 or the G7 Scout. Despite the nerfs going into Season 20, the 3030 is still a very solid weapon. It can still do a lot of damage, it can still spam some shots out, it can still be very oppressive. It's not the S tier, oh my god, you have to run this gun like it has been in the past, but it still does its job extremely well. It still opens up some opportunities, it still punishes people for over peaking. It still is the 3030. And the G7 Scout is also on the exact same level as this because it is very spammy, it can do a lot of damage in a short amount of time, and it can really punish people if they try to peek something that they shouldn't, or for if your team forces them out of a spot by pushing up and you're just looking down your sights, they poke out their head out, you hit them for a lot of damage, your team cleans up to kill everything's going perfectly fine now i will warn you guys going into this it is a little bit weird to not have any spray weapons in this type of loadout especially if you're a support player but once you get used to it once you really understand how to play around it it will be perfectly fine because the burst potential on the prowler is still so strong you do not need a spray weapon and some weapons like the g7 scout have such a good hip fire in close ranges that if it really comes down to it you can just hip fire and kill somebody like that potentially fairly often but let me know what your favorite weapon combo is in the comments down below and if you guys want to stay up to date with the laser grace apex legends tips tricks and doings don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button thank you all for watching once again i made second gaming i'll see you guys in the next one